we've already concluded that Hagrid's is the best ride in Islands of Adventure. The whole resort, to be honest. But that begs the question, if Hagrid's is the best, what ride's the worst? So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna rank the top five worst rides in Islands of Adventure. In fifth place is Dr. Doom's Fearfall. This one makes us a little bit sad that we put it on this list because it is one of our favorite rides. And we should mention that all of these are worth riding and experiencing. It's just that Islands of Adventure has a strong lineup of attractions. Unfortunately, Dr. Doom just falls short. And speaking of short, that's actually one of our biggest complaints with this attraction is the ride time. According to Universal, this ride lasts about 60 seconds, but that's starting from the time that you get strapped into the ride vehicle. Yeah, and it seems like half the time spent listening to Dr. Doom rant about like harnessing some energy from your fear and using that to defeat the Fantastic Four, which isn't necessary because they defeated themselves when they opened Cafe Four. Uh, the launch is pretty impressive though. It shoots you 185 feet in the air at 40 miles an hour. This is one of the only attractions in the parks that still gives me that stomach drop feeling every time that I ride it. I love Dr. Doom, but what it really needs is a second launch. So what happens is you get strapped in, it launches you all the way to the top and then you pulse back down in increments. What I wish it would do is that it would launch you all the way to the top twice in a row and then pulse you back down. This attraction rarely maintains a high wait time because so many people avoid drop towers in general, and we feel like that just goes to show that this is not an unpopular opinion. And yeah, the queue is cool, and Universal tried to give it a fun backstory, but at the end of the day, it's just a drop tower. In fourth place is Skull Island Reign of Kong. This is a fairly popular attraction in Islands of Adventure that continues to have high wait times. But if we're being honest, one of our favorite parts of this ride is the queue. And the queue is fantastic. We would recommend riding it just so you get a chance to walk through it. But the ride itself is just a 3D battle between King Kong and some dinosaurs. And although this attraction does have the biggest and most impressive animatronic that we have ever seen, the the rest of the ride just feels like it's lacking. Regardless of what Anna just said, dinosaurs are cool, so like, I think that gives some points to Kong. The biggest problem is that it's a party bus ride with a safari hat on it. And we all know how I feel about party bus rides. At the end of the day, it's the same attraction as that attraction <laughs> with a different skin. The only difference is instead of turning down for what, you're getting attacked by giant bats. And on top of that, this ride has had several issues lately. We've seen Kong delayed on every single trip we've taken to the parks this year. We've also seen people getting evacuated off of the attraction because it broke down while they were on it. And we even had an experience ourselves where the Kong animatronic wasn't working. It was one of the weirdest things Terrifying. that has ever it's happened. Terrifying. And although we do like to ride this attraction from time to time, we still think it deserves to be on this list because of its lack of excitement. The next attraction in third place is Cat in the Hat. But, and, and Tyler, that's a kid's ride and you shouldn't put kid's rides on this list just because they're not made for you. We had all kinds of comments on our studio's videos talking about how we shouldn't put kitty attractions <laughs> on the list. And obviously we disagree because we're talking about Seuss Landing. We understand that there's a need for kid-centered attractions and some of them like Flight of the Hippogriff, we're big fans yeah. of. It's just that others like Cat in the Hat don't do it for us. One of the biggest complaints we hear about this attraction has to do with the animatronic characters. <laughs> Specifically, Thing 1 and Thing 2, people talk about them being more out of a nightmare than something that you should find in a kid-centered attraction. Yeah. I mean, I guess the attraction did open with Islands of Adventure, so it is going on 23 years old. But regardless, my biggest complaint with this attraction is how long it lasts. I couldn't find an official like ride time on Universal's website, but it's gotta be close to five minutes long. The only attraction I've ever had a similar feeling on is It's a Small World at Disney, and at least it has that never-ending soundtrack to blame it on. Cat in the Hat does have one redeeming quality though, and that's the fact that it's indoors and air conditioned in a park that's filled with outdoor attractions that really can be a welcomed break from the heat. And plus the attraction itself is so bad, it's usually a walk on. 
On our top five worst rides in Universal Studios video, I made a comment that I could literally eat a dozen donuts and ride the Hulk without puking. Tyler was so kind to turn that into a challenge for me. I don't me. like where this is going. If that video hit a thousand likes. So what I think we should do in this oh, video gosh. is I think that if this video hits a thousand likes. Two thousand. Two thousand. Fifteen hundred. Whatever. <laughs> If this video hits 1,500 likes, I think Tyler should have to do some kind of challenge. So what I need you guys to do is comment a challenge down below, do and then once it hits Don't 1,500 it. likes, we'll put a poll up on our community tab, and you guys get to vote on what Tyler has to do. Don't do it. In second place, we have Storm Force Accelitron. Now this one personally hurts my feelings a little bit because I'm partial to teacup attractions, but I do realize that I'm in the minority here. So when she says it sort of hurts her feelings and that she's partial to them, the fact is this ride's honestly probably in your top five attractions in the park. Only only if I get to ride it with you because you get the teacup spinning so fast. Yeah, but there's there's one there's one issue with that <laughs> and that's that I have a weak stomach, so I can't ride it very often. Most people can't fathom getting on a spinning ride like this without it ruining their day. That so seems like a personal attack. <laughs> so it had to make this list. And most people just don't ride this attraction, which is one of the big reasons that we decided to put it in second place. Even when the parks are completely slammed, this ride isn't going to have a high wait time. I'm one of the weirdos that's over the age of like six and find spinning enjoyable, and I still don't ride it very often. Plus, Storm Force isn't any different than any other teacup ride that you can find at pretty much every other theme park. All it does is spin and it has a fairly short ride time, which to be fair is probably a benefit a for, for most people that ride it. But regardless, there's just nothing special about it. It doesn't really have any theming either. I mean, sure, it's painted a specific way and they talk about- Some strobe lights. <laughs> they talk about evil Magneto or whatever his name is. But at the end of the day, it's just a teacup ride and you can find them pretty much anywhere. And finally, in last place is One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. But Anna and Tyler, you get the point. <laughs> this is another kitty attraction in Seuss Landing that just missed the mark. This attraction did open with the park in 1999. And if we're being honest, they've done a really good job yeah. keeping up with the paint and the mechanics because this attraction doesn't look over two decades old. But similar to Storm Force, there's just nothing special about it. You sit there and you spin around in circles and you can move your little fish up and down, but that's all there is to it. And maybe we're being too hard on the kitty rides, nope. but I would rather ride Seuss Trolley, which is arguably a less thrilling attraction. I also think that Carasusel, although it's currently shut down for renovations, is a substantially better attraction as well. And another thing that irks me about One Fish, Two Fish is the fact that it's like a pseudo water ride. And if you don't have your fish either up or down when you're supposed to, you can get sprayed with water. So not only is it a generic kitty ride, but it's a generic kitty ride with consequences. This attraction is basically identical to Kang and Kodo's over in Universal Studios, and that attraction also made our top five worst list for that park. But the only real difference is that Kang and Kodo's has some really great views, which is a little bit of a redeeming factor for that attraction. When you're over in Universal Studios and you ride Twirl and Hurl, you actually get to see some like really pretty views of Universal Studios across the lagoon. Whereas with One Fish, Two Fish, it's like back in a corner in Seuss <laughs> Landing. And right now with all the renovations going on at the Carasusel, the only thing that you're going to get a view of is some construction walls. If you ever want to test whether or not you like it or Canyon Kodos better, all you have to do is the next time that you ride Canyon Kodos, take you a water bottle, pull a mouthful in, and like ride it with somebody, and then just tell them up or down. And if they don't do it right when you say it, you just spit it in their face, and then they can make their decision. <laughs> all right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and tell us all about how we must hate children for putting some of their attractions on this list. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, you can hit that subscribe button, and turn on that <laughs> bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.